Hello YouTube, welcome to my first build video. It's the Hong Kong Models B17G Flying Fortress. It's my second build of this. The one I did uh, previously is on my wall now. It's a bit of lace and you can see it on my uh, channel. I motorized it with magic scale modeling, light and sound. And I was gonna do the same with this one, um, but it's a bit expensive really. So I've decided to not bother with this one. And just have this one hanging on the wall next to her because I couldn't decide whether to do the olive drab or the bare metal. Um, I went for the bare metal, I do love it, but I still want an olive drab one, so that's why I bought another one. A bit extravagant, but yeah, can't really afford to motorize both. So, this is just a bit of a pre briefing, really, um, to help anybody that might be considering tackling this kit. It goes together quite easily, it's quite straightforward, and I'm particularly I'm looking forward to doing it. Uh, because I'm not going to be motorizing it which makes it a hell of a lot easier and having gone through it now I know uh, where most of the work is where work was wasted last time that I'm not going to bother repeating um, stuff like that really and just go over what extras I've bought because although it's a fantastic kit it's a lot of money you get a lot of detail for the money and there's bits of it you can see quite a lot of for example through the nose there's a lot of glass in the front section the cockpit's reasonably visible but not all that much so but stuff in the radio room and the rear fuselage you, you just ain't going to be able to see very much of it anyway um, if you're only going to spend money on one extra then you need the um, gun barrels the ones in the kit are I'd say rubbish they really let it down let me just see if I can find them here they are they're too thin in my opinion they've got strange shapes uh, on the end I think they're meant to be the flash hiders but they don't work very well the cooling holes there's probably half as many as I think there need to be um, yeah they're just rubbish so on my first build I used the metal ones two part uh, inner barrel and outer sleeve and they're brilliant if a little difficult to paint but they cost over I think they're about 25 26 quid for the pack which is a lot of money so I've just gone for the resin ones this time which are just as good um, quite well formed, nice um, nice depth to the cooling holes, slightly hollowed out on the tips. I used them before on my B25 Mitchell, so they are quite good. So yeah, if you're only going to shell out for one thing for this kit, that would be my advice anyway. Um, I'm using the Kits World uh, Little Patches scheme, so nice olive drab one. It's going to be really weathered, um, which... I think it looks quite good on the OD birds. These air scale decals for just kind of making the inside look a bit more interesting, really. I got these uh, duplicata. I can't even remember where I got them from on the uh, off eBay somewhere. They're little maps of German cities. To cut them out, fold them out, put them on the nav station. I thought they looked quite good. Edward masks I wouldn't model if these things didn't exist and I've got myself some seat belts kits world uh, for the front the um, bit of lace had pilots in this one isn't gonna have pilots obviously so I need some seat belts so that's the extras so as I said, having done this before, I know all the bits of it that I found a pain in the neck. So I wanted to get them out of the way as quickly as possible this time. So first of all, the engines. So each engine is comprised of the uh, cow flaps and rear assembly. Then you've got this thing. I don't know what it's called. Uh, they're all quite good. They've got little notches for um, locating the right way to put them on. Then the cylinders line up with another notch here. Make sure they're the right way around. like so. Then these uh, pusher rods, I guess. Then you've got the front of the crankcase. Then you've got the two part propeller hub. Cleaning up all this was a bit of a Bit of a grind to be honest but um it's got to be done 
So there you have an engine. And then you also, you have for each engine, you've got nine of these um, rocker covers here, which need cutting out and painting, sorry, sanding down. And they just fit over the ends there. And um, do you know what? Once the engine cowlings are over the front anyway, you can't see them. So if you lose a few, don't sweat it. Next repetitive items, bombs, each one of these two halves for the um, main shell of the bomb, two halves for the fins and a fuse rotor thing. Uh, there's little locator pins for mating the two halves of the fins. But if you're not careful, you might, uh, when you're cleaning up, you might sand them off, which will make life uh, difficult lining them up. So keep that in mind. Lots and lots of these little oxygen tanks everywhere. They need cleaning up. Um, I've tried not to sand them this time. I tried to cut them flush with a knife so that when I put a pin wash on, it's still got some detail to flow around. Propellers, propeller blades, um, taking them off and cleaned them off because they're a pain. Lots and lots of guns. It is a flying fortress, I guess. Um, so for each gun, you've got the uh, gun assembly itself there. Each one rests on a little frame. All these frames are the same for each gun, although not all the guns are the same. Then you have little handles, tiny little uh, gun sight, which is, it's not really to scale. I don't think it's a bit thick, but it's it's good enough really and you also have two halves of oh, these are the uh, mounts for basically having them poke out the window so you've got two halves for each of those I'm gonna to have to enlarge these holes in order to put in the resin gun barrels but that's not the end of the world Moving on, the uh, cockpit assembly. I cut out all the fiddly little uh, propeller and mixture and power levers, put them on. Rudders, seat assembly. The seat assembly is a bit hit or miss really with the with lining it up. The locator holes and pins aren't really much to, to speak of. But yeah, it does all go together quite well. The front instrument fascia, there's not a huge amount of detail on it. There's a decal for the instruments themselves and there's a blanking um, blank bit of plastic that goes behind this that you put the decals on and um, yeah, then you can see them through, do that after painting. It doesn't look too bad, but you can't really see a whole lot through the um, fuselage when it's all closed up anyway. You can see where all the oxygen bottles are going to go there, um, loads more down underneath here as well on this bulkhead, you'll never see them. Got the control columns uh, ready to go. They're just two parts. I'd really like to get a little Boeing decal for on the um, on the hub there, but I haven't been able to find any. Seats. I've seen a lot of builds where they've got yellow US Army cushions on the back, which I think look quite cool, but I can't find any anywhere. So I might just have to um, have them with the seat belts dangling over. Oh, well. So a whole load of other bits and pieces here. Um, you've got flooring, walkways, bulkheads. Believe it or not, I'm pretty sure everything I've shown you now, everything I've cut off here is enough uh, once painted to, to glue the two sides of the fuselage together. There's a lot more in the nose. That's a separate assembly. Basically, um, this is the floor of it. And then you've got the navigator's table, which goes uh, kind of perches on the edge there. And he's got a lamp and a few chairs and bits and pieces. Um, so that is a bit more complicated and we'll spend a bit more time on that because you can see loads of that through the nose. Um, but the rest of it, you're going to come up, have to come up with a system for doing the wood flooring and wood doors. It was all unpainted wood. So you've got the doors on the bulkhead. They need to be wood. All this floor, walkways, um, and even this front bit here, is going to need to be a wood effect somehow. I found two ways of doing it. The first involved 
these decals from Ushi, wood grain decals. It's uh, It looks like they produced these with the B17 in mind because you can see there um, it looks pretty amazing actually. I, I, um, I bottled it because I wasn't quite sure how successfully I'd be able to either cut them and then apply them or apply them and then cut them. I, I didn't think I'd I'd be able to do it without ending up ripping half of them off. So I found another way of doing it, which involved um, painting a base of Tamiya Buff, or very light brown, and then streaking oil paints across the top of it. And I did this for um, Bitter Lace. And I've got to say, I was quite pleased with it. I've even got a bit I can show you because I didn't use everything in the back of the fuselage because of all the electronics. So this was a bit that wasn't used. That's a bit of staining. I don't know how that happened, but that's what it looked like. And to me, that looks pretty woody. So that's what I intend to do again for all this. But I'll talk you through um, and show you uh, how that works out in one of the later videos. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of the size of the task with building this kit. Um, like I say, I haven't followed the uh, order of things on the instructions yet, just because psychologically for me, having done all this, uh, I, I feel like I'm always on the home stretch now. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously you'll, you'll, you'll have your own way of tackling it. Anyway, hope that's been uh, of interest to anyone that uh, might be thinking of building this. And I'll see you in the next video.